What's going on, guys? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on? What's going on, guys? What's up? What's up? David Year, what's going on, brother? How you doing? How's everyone doing on this Saturday afternoon? It's Saturday afternoon in the States. Everyone who's uh, watching right now, where are you watching from? Where are you watching? U.S., what state, what country, where are you guys watching from right now? <clears throat> Texas, hell yeah. What's the what's the weather like in Texas? Michigan? New England. Florida. Happy Black History Month to you too. Awesome, awesome. NE Nebraska. When I see NE, I think uh, I think Nebraska. It could either be Nebraska or New England, but I would assume you're saying Nebraska, <clears throat> Oklahoma. Cool. Lots of lots of guys from the states tonight. I've had um, I asked I asked that question on my last live, and the vast majority of people were uh, saying that they were from Europe or some country overseas. So. I always, I always just get interested, like depending on what time I go live, like where, where people are watching. Cool, cool. Lots of, uh, lots of people in the states. Who's, who's a football fan? Who's gonna be watching the Super Bowl tomorrow? And if you are watching the Super Bowl tomorrow, who's your bets? Who you got? Who you got? Tonight's. Tonight's drink of choice is the Sunkissed Zero Sugar. <clears throat> Sunkissed Zero Sugar. Uh, it's a good one. I think that the Crush is much better. Joe Burr, baby. Let's go, Joey B. How can you not cheer for him? How can you not cheer for Joey Burr? Creating safe. Yes, sir, of course. Creating is plenty safe. Creatine is a naturally occurring substance that is found in red meat. Uh, the, the problem is, is that people just aren't eating enough red meat to be able to get the amount of creatine that they need. So that's why creatine supplements are popular. But it's perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. How different is your push A to your push B? Um, they're pretty similar. Pretty similar. Um, in in my personal opinion, like you, you'll typically see people set up like two, like a push A or a push B, and have one that's like chest focused and one that's like shoulder focused, but. Um, I hit my shoulders very, very frequently, and so I, I don't really feel like I need to have a, a, a shoulder-focused push day. So both of my push days are, I guess you would, you could say, chest-focused. Um, so they're 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 pretty similar, very similar actually. 
should protein intake change bulk versus cut? So um, total, pr total protein intake, yeah, maybe potentially. Uh, typically when I'm at like a, a bulk, I like to have my protein on the lower end uh, just because the calorie surplus is gonna is going to signal all the hormonal changes that we need for the muscle growth to take place. And also when you're eating max amount of calories, I find if people can bring their, their direct protein intakes down, it's a little bit easier on their digestion. So if they're not eating as much meat at peak calories. And then in a deficit, I actually do increase my protein. Um, just because really pro protein is a very safe macronutrient to overeat on. Um, your body can store protein as body fat, but it needs to go through a lot of metabolic processes to be able to do that. And each time it does that, it, it burns more calories. So I, I do increase my protein intake on a cut. Is it safe with kidney issues? Yes, it's perfectly safe with kidney issues too. I've been off caffeine for a week and a half and my sleep is tremendously better and performance is, yeah, that's a, a very common, very common thing that I hear, especially from people who are like habitual caffeine users, people who drink energy drinks like every day and sometimes have two energy drinks like as soon as they pull their caffeine back, their sleep gets much, much better. I think I've, I've said this on almost... You know, every time caffeine gets mentioned, but I think that caffeine is something that should be used on an as needed basis, and that's it. You think training jujitsu and high intensity lifting is feasible? Lift frequency and volume lower. It it will definitely have to be lower. I, I think it's I think it's definitely doable. Um, there are a lot of people that I follow that do it. Uh, Jordan Peters, uh, Mike Gisratel, both of those guys do jujitsu and train with high intensity. Um, it, it also depends on how frequently are you training jujitsu. If you're doing it once a week, then who, who cares? Um, but. Thoughts on Sush and James English running PEDs at such a young age. I have no idea who either of those people are. For cable lateral raises, is lying on a bench better due to the added stability? Yes. Uh, I do think that uh, it's better to do that. You're, you're just going to be a lot more stable than you would be standing. I cut my calories on a deload week and all my lifts regressed. Hmm. Cut my calories on a deload week and all my lifts regressed. Yeah, that's um, that's not not good. You should should be on calorie maintenance during a deload week. Kidney issues? No, no problems with kidney issues and creatine. I'm on 500 milligrams of test at the moment. What was the question you asked before that? Oh. Good, good for you, dude. Cool, 500 milligrams of test. Fish and rice gang, my boy, Nathan. Fortnite tonight, let's go. Nathan, let me know what time you got. You guys wanna play tonight. <coughs> Chris is taking a nap right now, but we'll play whenever. Are you Muslim? No, I am not. Have you ever tried the pendulum squat? I have not. I have, I have not trained in a gym that has one. I wish that I did though because it looks fucking awesome. I would love to, I would love to use a pendulum squat. Do you gradually go back to your usual volume and intensity after a deload or go back 
to two sets to fail. Well, I, I don't do two sets to failure for everything. So I, I go back to my normal volume uh, pretty much right away, right away. And intensity, I don't, I don't change intensity during a deload usually. So I, I train at this level of intensity year round. What changes is the volume. So when I, when I deload, I cut my volume in half, and then when the deload's over, I just go back up to where, to where I was before. Unless, like obviously, my logbook told me that the level of volume that I was at was a little too high, then I may go back in a little bit lower. Um, but. If, if I had a really good run of training where everything was going good and uh, I was recovering at that volume, I'll just go right back into it. Waste no time. Are you into men? No. My question's got to update here, guys. Give me a second. Hey bro, I drink that same soda. That's a good one. This is a good one. I don't I don't know if you were here at the beginning, but this is the Sunkist Zero Sugar. The Crush is way better. Um, if you can find it, but the Crush the Crush is hard to find, but the Crush is really fucking good. It's a very humbling machine. Yeah, that it it looks like one. And it looks like you can just sink so deep into a pendulum squat. Castillo, do you do you have experience with one? If so, what do you think of it? Um, like I said, none of none of the gyms that I train at have it, and I don't know of any gym in my area that has one. The close the closest gym that I've seen that has one to me is like probably forty five minutes away, maybe closer to an hour. So, what do you think of it? Did the split squats feel better on the Smith? Yes, they did. Uh, I think I think the best thing that they would feel, the thing that they would feel the best on would be either a lying hamstring curl or a leg extension, but the lying hamstring curl and leg extension are like on the complete other side of the gym of where the dumbbell rack is. And I don't know, I don't know, man. <laughs> At the end of a at the end of a leg workout, I don't know if I want to be fucking walking all the way across the gym. But at the same time, if it's gonna be a pain in the ass to keep setting it up how I've been setting it up, then it may be worth it. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have to drink more water with creatine? Not necessarily. How come I'm not hungry after training? I'm I'm never hungry after training. Actually, after most leg days, I feel pretty nauseous after training. I I think that's pretty normal, to be honest. Some I mean, I some people get hungry after training, but I just I don't feel particularly hungry. And on days where I train really really hard and on usually on legs, um I'm almost nauseous after training. Yeah, it's really good. My second gym has one and the first time I tried it was very humbling. Yeah, man, I see I see people on my Instagram that have huge fucking legs and are like crazy strong and they're doing like four plates on it. So I know I know that thing has got to be like hard as hell. So I would I would love to use one. I would love to use one. You put me on in my first ever pre-workout. Which one was it, man? Which one was it? Train to failure every working set, or when should you leave some RIR if volume is at a manageable number? Um, if you're going to use RIR, I typically recommend that it gets no more than two. Um, typically, I would just say one. What exercises would you leave one, IR, one RIR on? The two that come to my head immediately are like a, a deadlift or a barbell back squat where it's not really feasible or safe to go to true failure. Um, or if in a case where you're injured, you may potentially experiment with leaving reps in reserve. Um, but I, I personally believe that you should just take all sets to failure so that you keep the intensity variable constant. 
Because I mean, the, the, the thing with training is there's so many variables. There's volume, there's intensity. And obviously we know that volume is a variable that changes. You, you, you can scale your volume up and you can scale your volume down. Uh, and this, the same with intensity, you can either train at max intensities or you can scale it down from there. I, I prefer to, instead of having volume and intensity be the moving parts, I just like to have intensity be set and let the volume be the, the moving part. So I think it just eliminates confusion. When do you recommend increasing the weight when progressive overloading? When you get to the end, when you get to the end of your rep range. So say if your rep range is 10 to 15 reps and you're doing 225, when you hit 225 for that 15, then I would bump the weight. Then your reps are going to drop to probably around that 10 mark and then you just build that until it gets to 15 and then bump the weight again. Does that mean I don't train hard enough? No, dude, like I said, I, I am not hungry after I train either. I hope that doesn't mean that I don't train hard enough, because fuck. <clears throat> Plus size queen, you go, girl. No, but it has calories. What what has calories? <clears throat> Thoughts on Ed Sheehan? I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, if if you if you mean Ed Sheeran, the fucking singer, I don't fuck with him. Is 1,500 calories too low for someone who's 5'9 and doesn't do cardio? No. If 1,500 calories isn't getting, or getting you where you need to go, then that's what you need to eat. I've eaten 1,500 calories before. <laughs> Bannikin, what are you talking about, bro? Opinions on stim pre's. I don't use them. Um, I don't think that they're necessary. If I want caffeine, I just take a caffeine pill, 200 milligram caffeine pill. I don't. I don't like feeling like a crackhead when I'm training. I don't. I don't like that feeling. So, I like to stay very calm while I'm training. And if if a pre workout makes me feel like fucking crazy, then I don't want it. Is there a happy medium between volume and intensity? Because two to three total sets per muscle per workout seems low. Man, you, you guys are not realizing the intensity that these sets are done at. If you do a set, like truly give your maximum, like a fucking gun to your head, there's no way that you could get another rep. What, what do you guys mean that that's too low? What, what do you mean? Is four days full body split beneficial? The traditional PPL takes too much time out of my week. Yeah, you could either do that or you could do um, an upper lower. So I would do, you'd be hitting upper twice a week and then lower twice a week. I think, I think you're probably gonna get more out of an upper lower than you would a full body. I think full body would be something maybe if you only had like three days a week to train then you may want to look at a full body. But if you've got four days, I liked, I like upper lower. I have to do two warm-up sets before getting into my working sets in order to progress them. Sometimes I got to do like six. Like on something like a leg press, I got to do like six or seven. So that's, what, that's why the sessions take so long is the warm-ups. 
hey man, got back to the gym after two weeks because of an accident. Tips on getting back to normal numbers. Just get back to it. They'll come back to you. Two, week, two weeks is not that long. It's really not. Your lifts will come back to you very quickly. Just keep on keeping on. <clears throat> know anything that can boost test naturally uh, control your stress prioritize your sleep um, don't eat processed foods Noth nothing that you can go out and buy all lifestyle change type things but no, no supplement that you can buy Is 2,700 maintenance seem low? No. no. I, I keep getting these questions about, like, do my calorie levels seem like they're in a good place? Like, guys, like, your body is unique to you. However, however much food that you need to eat to do whatever it is that you're trying to do is unique to you. Do not, co do not compare the amount of food that you have to eat to the, the amount of food that other people have to eat. Just do, do not do that. You guys are causing yourself a lot of mental stress instead of just doing, guessing and checking. <sighs> Super Bowl prediction. I realistically think that the Rams will win. I want the Bengals to win. I think that both... both Teams have really, really good offenses, um, but uh, L.A., the Rams, their defense is is much, much better than Cincinnati's, and Cincinnati's offensive line is bad. Like, bold exclamation, like, bold underline, bad. So I think Aaron Donald is going to fucking eat up the, is going to eat up the Cincinnati offensive line. What music do you listen to during training? Uh, I typically listen to either complete white noise or um, like upbeat techno music. And then I have I have a playlist that's got a bunch of like, it's got a mix of different shit. It's got techno music, it's got fucking metal, it's got rap, it's got a mixture of shit, so. Nice beard, thank you, man. Rory, how are you? How are things going, man? Hold on, guys. My questions are updating here. How long have you been using PEDs? Had no idea you weren't natty. One year. I've been using PEDs for a year. We're all different types of cars with engines, and absolutely, man. That's, uh... Man, I, I get asked that question all the time, and I, I get it. You know, when, when I when I started out, I was asking that question too. But now that I now that I know, man, you just you compare your amount of food to what you got to do. Joe Burr not losing. Yeah, man, I don't. I, I just don't know. I look, man. I I want Joe Burr to win. But Cincinnati's offensive they gave up nine sacks in the in the NF or excuse me, in the AFC no the NFC. No AFC. L geez. LA is the AFC team. They uh they gave up fucking nine sacks, man. And and they su they somehow won. But the the thing is 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 like if if you give up nine sacks and every time Joe Joey is like is throwing a pass like it's not like it's not like he's playing against like San Francisco like he's going to be throwing rushed passes to Jalen Ramsey like you know I just I, I think that the I think Aaron Donald is going to eat up eat him up eat him up Will Robinson love your content boss thanks with wish Seth Rogan Yep. Advice and on hitting my protein. 
I'm at 156 on 1800. Man, pro protein should be super easy. Buy a protein powder and drink it. You add in you add in fucking two scoops of protein powder on top of what you're eating right now, one in the morning and one at night, and you get you go from 156 to 206. Easy. Eat more chicken. Eat more. Eat more beef. Pro proteins. Proteins easy to eat. I'm doing a push pull legs upper lower, but it feels like upper has so many exercises. What amount of exercises is good? There's there's no set amount. Pick one or two per body part. For push, do a chest press, a tricep press, a lateral, a chest isolation, a tricep isolation. Maybe a second tricep isolation. That's it. Pull, do two lat movements, two upper back movements, some rear delts, some biceps. But you don't you don't need to do four, five, six exercises for the same muscle group. You don't need like four lat exercises and four upper back exercises. How do you train every body part twice a week in only four days? Upper lower. That you would upper lower, full upper would be would the long. I don't I don't know what that means, but how do you train every body part twice a week in four days? Upper lower. Seth Rogan, my guy. Yes, sir. Carbs are hard. I think car I think carbs are the easiest thing to eat. What would you do if when What? What what would you do if when you okay so he said yes would go? Bro, you drinking or something? Today was my push and I finally hit the 100 pound dumbbells on the incline. Let's go, man. That's great. That's awesome. Keep plugging away. Keep plugging away. Castillo, how many how many reps? How many reps did you hit the hundreds for? They beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. I believe in them. Yeah, man, but the 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 Chiefs defense is not the Rams defense. The Ram the Rams defense is fucking elite. Aaron Donald up front. Um who's who's the linebacker? He was a fucking bear, and I'm a Bears fan. I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. Um Holy shit, why can't I think? I gotta look it up. It's gonna bother me. When I see it, I'm gonna be like, yeah. Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd and Von Miller as linebackers and then Jalen Ramsey in the backfield, like that that is an that's an elite defense. That's not the Chiefs defense. And they beat the Chiefs in they beat the Chiefs in their own stadium in Arrowhead, but they're playing a better team in their stadium in LA. So Thoughts on doing a mini cut. I'm doing one right now. If you gotta do it, then do it. Is it possible to get a hundred? Yes, it is. The Rams almost lost to the corpse of Tom Brady and Jimmy G. Yeah, I guess you're right, but I I still I don't see the matchup. I just I don't I'm not looking at the past games, man. I'm looking at the matchup. And like like I've said like 10 times now, I want the Bengals to win. Like I'm a Joe Burrow fan. 
I just I just don't think realistic. Like if I had if I was betting money on the game, I'd bet on the Rams. How much should I rack up every? I don't know, man. I I don't understand your question. How much should I rack up every? I don't know. Von Miller, yeah, absolutely. Hundred pound dumbbells. Grand was a good time. Five reps plus two. Sweet. Were those yeah? Were those two reps forced reps or? Uh, Partials. I left semen visit my back door. Dude, some of the shit they get said in this chat is just wild. How many days per week do you train? Four or five? It depends. Five when I five when I can, but it's usually four. Are you natural? No, I'm not. What's your split? I run legs, legs push, rest, legs pull, rest, repeat. So I hit legs every three days. And I hit my legs twice as frequently as I hit push and pull. Partials. Nice, man. So you, you got five and two partials. So, I mean, obviously that's that's a great base to build from. That's awesome. Just keep, are, what's, do you have heavier dumbbells than that? Or are those like the heaviest dumbbells in your gym? Some, some gyms only go up to 100 pound dumbbells. Hopefully you got some heavier ones than that. So you got more that you can progress. 100 characters, bro. So what was your original question? 165 pounds and aiming to be 170, currently at 2,000. Just, just take your calories right now from 2,000 to 2,500 and see what happens. See what happens. If it flies up way too fast, then drop them back down by 200. But just throw in 500 and see what happens. I get an hour to train every day. Is PPL the best program to go by? Um... If you do your work fast, you could probably get it in. Um, yeah, I mean, I would I would keep your workouts very simple. Like push, I would do like one, one chest press, one tricep press, one tricep isolation, one delt isolation, and one chest isolation. That's it. Pull would probably be... Hmm. Pull would probably be two lat movements, two upper back movements, one rear delt, one shrug, one bicep curl, and then legs would be like a calf raise, leg extension, adductor, leg curl, and a squat. So you could you could do it. You could do it. What percentage are you planning to cut down to? I don't have a percentage in mind, man. I don't really I don't I don't really use like body fat percentage as much as a range. I am I'm just gonna cut down till my body fat is in a good enough place to where I know that I can bulk and not turn into a super fat slob. So I was two fifteen this morning. I wanna see what I look like at two ten. So I want to see what I look like in another five pounds. And then I'll make a decision at 210 based off what I need to do. Can I bulk from can I bulk up from 210? Uh, or do, do I need to maybe see what 205, 200 looks like? But right now I'm just focused on getting to 210, see what it looks like there. Do you think the Broncos will do good next year? They have a ton of potential, but they need to make moves in the, in the free agency. They need to make moves in the off season. If they if they end up signing Aaron Rodgers, which is like one of the potential things that could happen, that would be pretty wild. That would be pretty wild. Would upper lower be a better alternative? 
I th I think if if you've only got an hour, man, I think that you're um, they're gonna be pretty similar. Whether you do upper lower or whether you do push pull legs, like you're you're looking at like the same the same type of setup. Your your lower day would be the exact same thing as what a leg day would be like. What I said for push pull legs, and then an upper day would probably be. Uh, an upper day, I would probably do one lat movement, one upper back movement, one chest press, one tricep press, a bicep curl, a lateral raise. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably superset the lateral raise and the bicep curl at the end, but that would probably be what a full upper day would look like. How, um, bewilder, how many, how you have one hour, you have one hour a day to train. How many days a week do you have available to train? Tell me that and I can get you a better answer. Be right back guys. Is this a good push day? Flat and incline dumbbell, overhead, press, lateral raise, two tricep isolation. Um yeah. That would be that would be good. I would maybe do you're doing your flat and incline presses both with dumbbells. I would maybe do like one with dumbbells and then one with uh, a machine or a smith. I wouldn't do both of them free weight, but you could do it. I do shoulder press and superset Y raises with behind the back side raises for push. What do you think? You can, does it work? Do you like the pump and are you progressing your lifts? If the answer is yes to those questions, then run with it. Typically, when I when I like to do supersets, I like to superset muscle groups that aren't the same thing. Like I wouldn't superset two lateral raise movements or two chest movements or two whatever because like you're taking away from the performance on the second one. Like it like, so I wouldn't do that, but to each their own. Yeah, my gym goes up to 165. Yeah, so you got you got plenty of room, man. Well, that's great. First time you touch the hundreds, that's a milestone. I I remember the first time the first time whether I mean the the first time that you you pass into those triple digits is like that's a it's a good feeling. So, good job, man. Keep going. Next up is the 200s. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you ever get to a point in your life where you press 200 pound dumbbells, you better fucking remember that I said it on this live. Isn't doing full upper body in one session take super long? Yeah, it can take a long time. Should you progress every gym session or every week? Every session, ideally. What are your thoughts on the teachings of Menser slash Hit? So I use a ton of the principles that Mike Menser recommends. I per I personally think that the Mike Menser Hit program, like by the book, is not something that most people can pull off successfully. Uh, because one, it's just not possible for most people to train at that level of intensity. And, and two, even though that I am a proponent of lower, lower training volumes, uh, I think that the amount of volume that's in the Menser program is just a little too low for most people. 
but like there there are ton there are tons of people that have that have ran the Mike Menser hit program successfully and made crazy progress on it. So it's if you're gonna do the Menser hit program, you have to like commit to it and like do it by the fucking book. But um, Mike Menser was a genius. Mike Mike Menser was the first guy to ever, you know, question and actually make you think about like how does this happen? Make you think critically. So he's an OG, that's what I think of him. What's a good speed to use when doing the spare ma the stairmaster? The fastest speed that you can do without having to hold on to anything. Nothing nothing makes me more aggravated than seeing people do cardio machines and like holding on for dear life like you're defeating the, the point of the whole thing. How do you progressively overload lateral raises if the cable goes up in kilograms and is too big of a jump? Just build reps. So let's say I'm I'm gonna use pounds because um because I'm in in the States, but Let's say that you have those cable stacks where they go they, they go up in like five pound increments. So it goes from five to 10 to 15 to 20. And let's say you're on the, the 20 pound setting and you get like 15 reps and then you jump up to the 25 pound setting and it cuts your reps from like 15 to like six or seven, like it cuts it pretty drastically. Then what I would do is I would stick on the 20 pound setting until I hit that for like 20 or 25 reps. So that when I jump from the 20 to the 25, my reps are still going to get cut back, but they're not going to get cut back from like 15 to 7. They're going to get cut back from like 25 to 12. So if, if, you have, if you have those cable stacks where the jumps up cut your reps considerably, then the, the upper end of your rep range needs to be a lot higher. 20, 25, 30. So... So that way, when you increase to the next one, like, yes, your reps will still decrease, but when they decrease, they will decrease to a point where you're still working in a reasonable rep range. And the behind the, the back side raise targets the length and posi position of the side delts. Oh, my bad, rest twice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. I, 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 I can see how that would work. I, I would program that for somebody, but it works. It works. That's my fault. I, I must have misunderstood the original question. I'm not sure what I thought you meant in the original question, but it wasn't that. So that's my fault. I misread your question there. So right now you train three three days and three rest. So I would do upper lower. I would do upper lower, man. If you've got one hour to train and three days a week to train, I would do upper lower. Tips on building muscle. Train hard, train progressively, eat enough food to gain weight. When you get too fat, cut cut it off, diet it off, and then go back up again. Repeat for 10 years. Would that be a single set each? Um, well, I would, I would start at a single set each for all of those exercises. And then I would increase based on the body parts that you want to bring up. So let's say, let's say you want to bring up your chest. I would do one set of everything that I mentioned on an upper day, but I would maybe do two sets of the chest press. Or if you want to bring up your back, then maybe you do two sets of the lat. You you add the volume to the areas that you're trying to grow.
Is PPL the best six day split? It can be. I mean, there 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 is no best split. Um, it, it depends to how you're recovering and how well are you progressing your lifts. So I I don't I don't want to say that there's a best split. I also think most people that are training six days a week can benefit from training less. So keep that in mind. If my gym has no glute machines and I don't want to set up hip thrusts, what do you do for glutes? You have no options but other to do the hip, the hip thrust. You have no option. If you have a smith, then do the hip thrusts in the smith. Like, that's a way that you don't have to set it up. But if you don't have a smith and all you have is a barbell, then you have no choice. Bi, try, chest, back, legs, shoulders, rest, repeat. Well, that's, that's not necessarily a, a mess. Um... I just, I just think you're going to get, um, you'll be able to hit the muscles more frequently if you do upper lower. So, cause right, right now you're, you're only hitting everything once a week when you have a uh, upper lower split one week, you'll be hitting your upper stuff twice a week. And then one week. So, so here's, here's how I would set up your upper lower split when you've got three days, like your, your first week is going to be lower lower upper lower <clears throat> and then your next week is going to be wait what did i say your first week is going to be upper lower upper and then your next week is going to be lower upper lower and then you're just going to go back so every other week one week is going to have two upper days and one lower day the next week is going to have two lower days and one upper day and then the next week we'll go back to two upper one lower etc cetera, etc cetera. so you'll just be hitting stuff more frequently that way What's your opinion on mechanical drop sets? Um, they have a place. <laughs> you, you have to have the equipment available to be able to pull them off. Um, I think that they are something that you would tack on at the very, very end of a, of a workout to a lagging muscle part like, or to a lagging body part. Um but I wouldn't like construct like an entire like workout around the premise of it. But they they definitely have merit. They definitely have merit. So, but but like I said, you have to have you have to have the equipment available to pull it off. A lot of the mechanical drop sets re rely on prime equipment, and not a lot of gyms have the prime equipment. Switched from higher to lower volume and my sets progressed like two to three reps. Yep, yeah, man, you're because you're recovering better. That's I I love hearing stuff like that. It's it's very um human nature in this sport or whatever to think that more is better and, and more is most definitely not better. It's not. So it makes me glad to hear stuff like that. Castillo, I'm serious, bro. If you ever press two hundreds, I want, I want, I want a shout out for it. <clears throat> Should I be putting a leg extension before squatting if I already have a seated ham curl? I, I like to do my, I like to do my adductors, my leg curls, and my leg extensions before I do my squat pattern. Personally, I know a lot of people that like to squat off the rip. But if you're, if you're squatting or doing leg presses with true balls to the wall intensity, like when I, when I finish doing a max effort set of hack squats, the last thing I want to go do is go fucking do leg curls and leg extensions. When I finish a hard set of hack squat, I'm done. The workout's over because I, I gave like literally everything to that set. Everything physically and like mentally. I don't I don't think people understand like 
the mental energy that you have to channel into a set like that too. And like when, when you finish a set like that, you're like, fuck this, man. I don't, I don't have any energy to do anything else. Thoughts on supersets and would you use them on a normal basis? I, I, I would not use them on a normal basis. Um, I think that you can you can use them. The most advantageous time for them to be used is if you're crunched for time, uh, and you need to get your workout in quicker. Um, but there's there's a couple prop. Well, I don't want to say there's a couple problems. My my main concern with the supersets is that um, by the time you get to that second, you, you obviously you're supersetting two exercises. When you get to that second exercise, you're starting that exercise already with a little bit of an oxygen debt. Like you're probably your heart rate is is elevated from the effort that you put into the the first exercise, um, which is going to take away from how many reps you could have gotten on that second exercise if you just waited for your heart rate to come down a little bit. Um, and then the other thing that I don't like about supersets is when people superset two exercises for the same body part that don't have opposing resistance profiles like what my man mentioned earlier with the with the uh the wire raises and the behind the back cables um so like people super setting like two chest flies or like two tricep extensions or two bicep curls i i don't see the point in that because by when you when you start the second bicep exercise like not only do you have the oxygen debt that i mentioned before but you also have this this incredible amount of like localized fatigue, you know, the, the pump, the, the lactic acid and all of that stuff like building in, into the muscle. And obviously like that feels good to have that pump, but the reality of, of the situation is, is that it is taking away from how many reps you could have gotten on the second exercise if you waited for that to dissipate. So if you are going to use supersets, I would only use them um, on uh, workouts where you're pressed for time. And if you're going to superset exercises, I would not superset two exercises that are working the same muscle group. So I would superset like a bicep curl and like a lateral raise or like a tricep extension and a pec deck or a rear delt fly. And, uh, I don't know, tricep extension. You know what I mean? Like exercise exercises that are not working the same muscle groups. Fair, I'll do Smith just because there's no space anywhere else. Yeah, man. If if you don't have a glute drive, then you'll have to you'll have to use um, something else. But I I I love Smith machine glute bridges. I think they're they're great. I think a, a Smith a Smith machine glute bridge is just as good as any of these. I I train at it. I had trained at two gyms that have really good leg. Um, glute glute bridges one of the gym has the nautilus glute drive which is kind of like with you know for the people who are equipment geeks the nautilus glute drive is kind of like considered one of the best glute drives like on the market uh, and then the other one has the arsenal strength glute drive which i don't really like but a lot of people seem to like so um and i would i would compare uh, a smith machine glute bridge to any of those easily Cardio or rest day on good idea. I do cardio on my rest days right now. So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Any reason why you're always layered up during your lifts? Well, right now, right now it's like 10 degrees in Chicago. So it, it's fucking cold right now. Uh, but even, even in the summer, I'll be wearing hoodies and sweatpants. I just... I don't... I don't have like a hardcore answer. I just... I like to feel comfortable when I'm training and I feel very comfortable in baggy clothes. Um, I like to feel warm. Uh, I like to sweat. You know, I've, I've been in, I, I played football my whole life. I've been an athlete my whole life. Like I enjoy, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I'm making sense right now, but um, yeah. The most exposed that you'll see me is wearing a t-shirt. In in the summer, like I'll I'll have a hoodie on for the beginning of the workout and then like in the middle of the workout I'll take the hoodie off and I'll be in a t-shirt. But 
right now when it's like 10 degrees and stuff outside, like I'm wearing, I wear the hoodie the whole time. I just don't care. And and that really is the biggest reason why I stay layered up all the time is because I don't really care what I look like. I'm not, I'm not in the gym to like look at my, you know what I mean? I'm in the gym to do the work and that's really what I care about. So corny answer, but. Decided to do the cuff lateral races, but now you feel pain. Where do you feel pain at? You've been brilliant, mate. Thank you, man. That's what these that's that's what these lives are for, is I want to answer your guys' questions. So more on progressive overload. When do I add weight? When you reach the end of the rep range. What caloric calculator do you find is most accurate for finding maintenance? I don't use, uh, I don't use any calorie calculators, really. Um, most of the time, when I have when I have cl new clients come to me, they they have an idea of what they're eating already, so I just pick up with where they are right now. So. One second, guys. My questions are going to update. Does sweating more necessarily mean more weight loss? No. No. Because it's, it's just water. It's just water weight that you're losing. So, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't wear baggy clothes to like, you know for like a permanent sauna to like lose water weight or anything. I just, I, I just, I feel very comfortable in baggy hoodies and baggy sweatpants. I just, I always have, and that's what I like to train in. So what age did you hop on? I was 24. I'm 25 right now. I was 24 when I started my first cycle. I'm in Chicago too, and it, it's fucking cold, isn't it, bro? So, yeah, all these pe people asking questions about why you wearing why you wearing hoodies and sweatpants because it's fucking cold. <clears throat> Would you recommend a calisthenics based workout for a deload session? I mean, you could do it. You could do it. If you've never done calisthenics before, you may get super sore from a calisthenics workout, which would defeat the whole point of a deload. So I'd keep that in mind, but I mean, you could do it. How have you been liking the split squats? They're fucking, they're fucking hard, man. Like they're, they're easy on my left leg, but on my right, on my right leg, it, they're very difficult. But, um, I, I know that's why I need to do them is because if I can get good at doing this movement, like it's gonna hopefully fix a lot of my injuries. So. When I, when I go into the gym to do them, I'm like, fuck, I got to do these split squats again. And it's going to be embarrassing. But when I finish them, I, I, I get a good feeling because I know that I'm. I'm actually I'm actually doing something about a weakness that I have instead of just ignoring it. So give me one second, guys. I'm going to plug my computer in. If my gym doesn't have a hack but has a v, a Smith V squat, leg press, and barbell squat, what would you do? I would do a Smith squat and a leg press and a V squat. I don't like barbell squats, but if you like them, then, uh, then do those. What's the weirdest thing you've seen at the gym? Hmm. 
Oh, man. I can't say that I've seen, like, stuff that's, like, crazy fucking weird. Um, when I was a personal trainer at... Uh, actually one of the gyms that I, both of the gyms that I train that both of the gyms that I train at, like work out in, I also used to train people in. And, in one of those gyms, there used to be this guy who was like 70 or something. Like he was a, he was an older guy, but he was like ungodly fucking flexible. And he would do like handstands and like crazy shit and stuff like all the time. So the first time that I saw that, that was a trip. Um, there is, there's a guy that goes to, um, the gym that I was at this morning. I only ever see him on, uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings. If, if I train on a Saturday, Sunday morning, but while he's training, he carries, he carries this big, I'm pretty sure it's an iPad, but he carries this big tablet and he's watching Twitch on it. Like while he's playing video games, like he's watching or, or while he's lifting, he's watching Twitch. Um, that's kind of weird in my opinion. Uh, I don't, I don't have any like really good stories, unfortunately. If I, if I did see something just crazy ass wild in the gym, I would record that shit and I would post it on TikTok and get a million views. That's what I would do for real. Hey brother, appreciate your content. Test only or do you stack? No, test only. I've only ever done test only and I would only only recommend um if if I were to hypothetically recommend people's first cycles, they would only be test only. But I the only compound that I have ever taken in my life is test. Do you have any great exercises for more mobile ankles? Yeah, because I'm I'm working on this right now. Uh, just just YouTube search uh, ankle mobility. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of like banded ankle mobilizations and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion type of stuff. Um, it's it's really kind of straightforward. So just uh, being being religious about doing it. So. Do you ever do cardio? I do I do cardio on every rest day. I do 20 minutes of steady state cardio and then I do four rounds of hit. Hit on the battle ropes. Do you mostly eat carbs that are high on the glycemic index? Yes, because uh, I'm eating a lot of my carbs. I'm, and so typically, typically the carbs that I'm eating are higher on the glycemic index because they, they digest quicker for me. So I can get them in and uh, not feel like fucking shit, honestly. Also, a lot of the low glycemic index carbohydrates don't digest very well with me. Uh, I don't digest oats very well. I don't digest sweet potato very well. Um, I don't even like sweet potato, so even if I did digest it well. Um, but yeah, mostly... It's mostly rice, all rice-based stuff. Hey, dude, I think I missed it. Would you mind repeating what you said about my three times full body a week? Three uh, three times full body a week? I, Rory, I, I don't remember if I'm going to scroll up here. I'm trying to see if there was a place where you put um, what it was that you were, what you did for each individual workout but um three three times a week full body is is perfectly fine um is full body like a, t a time concern for you a time crunch a time crunch for you or um or what do you, do you have any questions about it but i i mean just just thinking about three times a week full body there's nothing that i think is is off the ordinary there You're on a mini cut right now. Yes, I am. Calisthenics. I answered this earlier. Test by itself is is enough for most lifters. Absolutely. 
people if people had if people had their diet and their training in order, they would be blown away with what they can do with just test. It's amazing. It it would shock most people what they could do with just test if they just got their training and their diet in order. How long do you rest between doing unilateral movements? I typically just go straight into it. Um Especially if it's like a bicep curl where like I finish my left arm and it, I, it's not like I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, breathing hard. I just go right into the next one. Now, when I, when I do like single arm rows, like some, sometimes when I, when I finish a side, like I'm, I'm breathing a bit harder. So I'll just, I'll usually wait like 30 seconds to a minute or so until my, my oxygen debt goes away and then I'll just start the other arm. But you, if it's if it's something easy like a tricep extension or a bicep curl single arm, I just I go right right into the other arm. Oh man, mouth gets so dry during these. Do you think everyone should be using muscle group? Ooh, I missed it. Do you think everyone should be using muscle group focus days? No, I actually think the opposite. I think most people don't need to worry about that at all. I don't think most people need to worry about having a quad focus day or having a lat focus day at all. I think the only people that should be worried about doing that are competitors who need to improve specific body parts in order to advance to the next level of competition. If If you're not a competitor and you're just a guy who's like, you don't need to worry about having a quad focus leg day or whatever. How long do you rest between sets? I rest, um, uh, I rest as long as I need to and no longer, pretty much. So until my heart rate comes back down to normal, I don't time it. For isolation movements, it's pretty quick. For compound movements, it could be probably five minutes. Cheer, uh, wondering if all the exercises. Yeah, Rory, go ahead, list them. Let me see your. Uh, let me see your full body. I'll give a quick critique on it. Thoughts on three on one off repeat. Um, if you can recover from it, it's great. If you can't, it's bad. What do you think your weakest muscle group is? Um. Who I can't <laughs> I think it's all weak, to be honest. Um if I had if I had to pick maybe my quads. Quads, um quads and pecs maybe. I feel like my arms are small, but when I look at my pictures, I feel like my my arms are like, what you know, they match, they fit good. So, or lats. I mean, I feel like my lats can improve a lot. That's why I'm doing a lot of lat work right now. Thoughts on GH and insulin. Um, if you're an advanced competitor, it's at some point going to be a necessity. Uh, if you're not an advanced competitor, you have no place using either of these. Chris Leo. I can't, I can't see your, I was seeing if, if I could see your profile picture, but I was going to say if that, it looks like it's a wrapper or something in your profile picture, but I was going to say, if that's you and your profile picture, you do not need to be using GH and insulin. <clears throat> how do you approach your training when coming back from a deload? How quickly do you start progressively overloading? Uh, I start progressively overloading right away, and I'm progressively overloading during the deload most of the time. All, all that changes for me when I do a deload is I cut my volume in half, but that doesn't mean that on the other half of the volume that I don't like take a PR. Like I'll still take a progressive, a progression if it's there. I, the, the fatigue goes away by the reduction in volume, not the reduction in intensity.
Hey, Dad, how you doing, son? Arnold predictions. Um, I want Brett to win. Let let me let me pull up the list here. Let 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 me pull up the list before I start talking. Um. <laughs> Where would I find the competitor list? All right. Wow, this is a stacked fucking show. Um all right, so I'm, I'll do I'll do a top five for you, Chris. How about that? First, this this is just just so we're aware. This is everybody at their best. Um, if every if everyone is at their best, this is this is what I see. Um, Curry Curry wins the whole thing. I think. Brett is second. Akeem is third. That 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 could be a wild one. Akeem is third. Some people may disagree with that, but if if Akeem is in shape, then Akeem is you know, Akeem is legit. So I've got who'd I say? Curry, Brett, Akeem. And then Steve Kuklo. And then fifth is a toss-up between William and Regan. I actually think Regan could be a wild card. But I will put my money on William. So I think one through five is going to go Curry, Brett, Akeem, um, Kuklo, and Bonak. But that's my top five. Are you going to do a physique update after the mini cut is over? Maybe. Probably. Thanks for the predictions, Jay. Yeah, dude. I honestly, I looked at that list. That that was hard for me to. Uh, that was a hard list for me to come up. J-Rod does look crazy, dude. Um, who who do you know, Chris, who uh, is coaching Justin? AJ Sims. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And um who else was on here? Max Charles is on here. I don't I don't know if I can see Max Charles being in the top 5, but Max Max Charles is a guy that's like been right on the cusp for a while. Um D Nathan Diasha is on this list, but I I know after seeing on Instagram that he's not going to be there. Um Cedric Cedric is in this one. Uh, the, the thing with Cedric though, why I didn't put Cedric in my top five is that he hasn't competed in a long time. And I think that's going to hurt him. It, it's, it's either going to hurt him or it's going to really benefit him. But Cedric is, Cedric is one of those guys. Uh, that's yeah. Favorite exercise for back. I love the, uh, chest supported pull downs whether it's single arm or with it with the the two arm i love those i'm not gonna be there this year sorry nathan nathan you would be my uh the guy that i would pick to win um nathan let me know what time maybe you texted me i have me what time you guys want to play tonight <clears throat> your go-to upper back exercises i love um I love a chest supported T bar row and a uh, upper back pull down.
but definite, definitely a T-bar. T-bar is an essential. A chest-supported upper back row of something. It could be dumbbells, could be a T-bar. Back squats and hamstring curls for legs. All right, yeah, Rory, I'll let you. I'll let you type out. Uh, I'll let you type that out, and then I'll. I'll get you. How much do your upper body days usually take? My push and pull days are usually like an hour and a half. How many times have you wanted to quit bodybuilding? Just been losing motivation. Never once. Um. Honestly, the the more the more time that I spend bodybuilding, the more that I want to do it. So never, never once, honestly, I, I know that's, that's not a good question, honestly, but, um, I really just like, I, I don't think about anything else other than bodybuilding. So bodybuilding is like my, my entire fucking life, honestly. So never once. Are you enhanced? If so, how long? Yes, I am. Uh, one year. I've done two cycles. Do you think seated leg curls are better than lying leg curls? Um, I do prefer seated leg curls. I don't think that lying leg curls are bad. I think that lying leg curls require a lot more, um, like, uh, technical movement in your setup than most people realize. And I don't think most people are capable of, of doing it. Did you cycle off for the same length of time that you were on? Um, yeah, so my, I cruise, I don't, I don't PCT, but my, my first cruise was the same amount of time that I was on. And then, um, I, I think the second I just finished my second cycle and this cruise that I'm doing now will probably be shorter than the time that I was on. Would you say you have bad or average genetics in terms of going pro and bodybuilding? I have no idea what my genetics are. I don't I don't think I don't think that people have any idea of what their genetics are until they've dedicated like 5 to 10 years of like legitimate legitimate <clears throat> effort towards their goal so because i've i've seen pictures of people that if you look at what they look like normally they look like you would say that their fucking genetics were horrible and then five to ten years later they look like a, a you know a god so i have i have no idea what my genetics are uh i am just i'm trying to find out I, I don't want to try and guess, honestly. I'll say that I spent my entire childhood as a fat kid, so they're probably not that good. But that, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do it. You know, I, I just, I love this. So went to my interview at GNC and got the job. Let's get it. Let's get it. GNC gang. GNC gang. Gang. GNC gang. Six thirty. I start on Monday. Let's go.
would you say you are healthy? In some ways, yeah. In some ways, probably not. But my blood work looks good so far. Um, I could be healthier. I could eat more vegetables and I could eat more fruits. But I also don't drink. I don't, you know, I get eight hours of sleep every night. So I don't know. I would say that competitive bodybuilding is not healthy, so. What's your favorite muscle to train? Probably legs. I love legs. Leg days are the best. How many days a week do you train for? What are your plans in terms of content for growing a platform and is that something you prioritize? It absolutely is something that I prioritize. Um, I have a long list of TikTok content that I want to post. Um, I want to get back into making long form content for YouTube. I actually just put up a video, it was probably like a day or two ago on my TikTok asking for suggestions for the YouTube channel. Um, I would like to start a podcast eventually. I think right now with where I am in my life, starting a podcast is going to be a lot to put on my plate. Um, but, uh, and then eventually when, when I get to the point where I prep for my first show, I would love to do like a weekly YouTube series with like a professional videographer, um, each week leading up to the show. I think that would be pretty fucking cool. So I've, I've, I've got plans, you know? It's just about uh, putting them into action. Do you do upper lower? I basically do upper lower, basically. What's your favorite pre-workout meal snack and what would you recommend to everyone else? So my pre-workout meal is the smallest meal of the day. Um, I like to eat a real small meal about an hour to an hour and a half before that I train um, just so that when I'm training I don't have any like discomfort in my stomach and I'm I, I'm not like burping and and stuff like that during the workout that's that's the worst um, so my my current pre-workout meal is um, whey isolate with uh, cereal and a little bit of fruit and usually what I do is I blend that so I'll, right now it's like 50 grams of cocoa pebbles uh, and then 50 grams of banana and then I'll do um, it's it's 40 grams of the protein powder it's like 35 or something grams of actual protein and then I'll blend that as a shake and I'll drink that so that's that's my current pre-workout. Um, something really, really light like that on my stomach. And and that's that's what I would recommend to everyone else too. Um, would would be something that's smaller, lighter on your stomach, really easy digesting. So something like oats or cream of rice or um, whey. 
You could use a little bit of fats in your pre-workout meal if you want to. If you find that your blood sugar like crashes during the middle of a workout, you could add some fats to your pre-workout meal. But I personally like to keep fats out of my pre-workout meal just because I find that fats uh, slow down the digestion a little bit. But that's what I like. I, I don't I don't really typically like to um, eat like an animal-based protein like before I work out. So I don't really like to eat like chicken or beef or eggs or something like that. Uh, I, I pretty much will always do like a whey pre-workout. Just something really light on the stomach. Is oatmeal and peanut butter a good pre-workout meal? If it feels good on your stomach, then yes, it is a good pre-workout meal. If it doesn't, then I would change it. Tips to growing a beard, man. I have I have no tips. This is all genetic. Um, ask my grandfather and my dad. <laughs> Do you like any other fitness content creators? Yeah, um, Jordan Peters, Matt Jansen, um, Kuba Chellen, AJ Morris. Um, a lot of those guys. Big fans of those guys. Love your content, brother. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you for watching and, and taking value. You look like Seth Rogen. I get that a lot. That's probably like the fifth time I've gotten that in this chat. Honestly, though, if if I have to say that I look like like somebody, I mean, it could it could be worse than Seth Rogen, I guess. I guess it could be worse. I thought the pebbles would make an appearance. The, the pebbles always make an appearance, man. Big, big fan of the, uh, big fan of the Cocoa Pebbles. Big fan. Tips for skinny fat. Should I bulk then cut? Yeah, uh, no, I would cut and then bulk. If you're skinny fat, that means two things. It means that you have no muscle and it means that you're also fat, which means that you need to lose fat and build muscle and out of those two things, fat loss is the quicker and easier option to take. So I would lose the fat and get lean and then bulk from that point. Tips for content creating. Just make it, dude. Th think about something you want to talk about and point the phone at yourself and say it, you know. I <laughs> I'm that's like the probably the worst advice that I could give, but I think it, it it's you know i think people really overthink the content that they're posting um yeah i think they really overthink it um You're a beast. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, with the the if you're if you're gonna be in this game for a while, you need to understand that you're gonna do this cut and bulking thing like a lot. I mean, your you, your life from here on out is as a cycles of cutting and bulking, cutting and bulking, cutting and bulking. So, um, I would just cut and bulk, and then when you get too fat in your bulk, cut again, and then bulk, and then cut again and bulk. It's very straightforward. Do you have some off-plan meals? Yes, I do. Um, usually once a week I'll have uh, an off-plan meal. Either it'll be something that my girlfriend and I will go out and have or we will make at home together. Sometimes, you, usually what happens on most weekends is one of the days we go out and then the other day we'll make something. So I may have two off-plan meals in a week. But um, I would say I would say eight out of ten times my off plan meals like are are tracked like they're they're they fit in my in my macros like I I know about the meal that we're gonna have beforehand and so I plan my other meals around it so that I finish the day 
you know, right where I need to be. Do you ever use RPE in your training or with your clients? If not, how come? Um, I don't really, I don't really use RPE. Um, not that, not that I think it's bad. I just think that most people uh, don't know how to accurately assess RPE. I, th I think a lot of people, if you ask, if you ask somebody like, how hard do you think that set was? And they'd be like, oh man, that was an RPE eight or nine, when in reality it's like a six or seven, you know? So I think it's just not a good scale to use for, uh, for tracking effort because I don't think a lot of people can accurately assess it. What's your vitamin regi regimen look like? Uh, Jonas, if you go, if you go on my page, uh, and you go to my videos, uh, like either yesterday or the day before I uploaded a video about my supplement cabinet and all of the things that are in it. And that will be the answer to your question. All right, guys, I'm going to be on here for, I, I, I think, another five minutes or so. So if you guys got any more last second questions, then please feel free to throw them in, throw them in, throw them in. Trying to gain muscle while playing hockey six days a week, how much of a surplus would be good? You're going to have to eat a lot. So I, I would go like, I don't know, 500. I, I'd get pretty aggressive with it because you're going to be very active. So you're going to need a lot of food. So don't be scared to eat. That's what I would say. Have you ever thought about powerlifting? No, I, I really haven't. Um, and it's not that I think poorly about powerlifting, um, but I did I did five years or four year no it was five five years of Olympic lifting slash powerlifting when I did football training, so I've you know I've I've put my time in doing that stuff, and I just uh, I I think it's awesome I I have a lot of friends that powerlift. And it's fucking awesome to watch, but I personally have no interest in, in doing powerlifting. How do you personally deal with plateaus or regressions in some of your lifts? If you're plateauing or regressing in a lift, there's an explanation for it. Uh, so I try to get to the bottom of that. What's a good rate of weight gain in a week for bulking? I usually recommend anywhere from half to one pound a week. I've been thinking about recording my sets, but it just seems really difficult in a way. What do you mean by difficult? Like you're you're having a hard time like recording it because of other other people in the gym or or you don't know like how to actually do it. I have I have a tripod that I bring in the gym with me. What are your thoughts on Jay Cutler? One of the one of the goats, man. Um I watch I watch Jay Cutler stuff all the time. Cause Jay Cutler Jay Cutler was a big eater. And honest honestly on the days where I'm struggling to eat, I like to watch videos of other people eating. It helps me do the do. And J J eight, so I'm a bit. I'm a big fan of Jay Cutler, and I think that Jay Cutler is is definitely the best ambassador of the sport that we have. Absolutely, absolutely. What do you think of Rich Piana? Uh, you res you respect the guy for how honest he was, and how. Um, how he lived his life on his his terms and he did what he wanted and uh 
what else? The, the, he, he gave a lot of good advice. Like, even though I think the amount of drugs and stuff that he was taking was just ridiculous and no one needs to take that amount of drugs. Um, I think that, uh, I think he had a lot of good advice. He always preached how important it was to eat, uh, how important food was, how it was not the drugs that made the people. It was the food. Um, I, I, you know, I would not have done what he did, but I, I watched a lot of Rich Piana stuff and he's, uh, definitely a legend in this industry. So just the time that takes to set up to record. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, I never really find that it, it doesn't really take a lot of time for me. At the beginning of my workout, I put my phone in my tripod and I carry my tripod around with me and wherever I set my gym bag down, I set my tripod next to it and right, I'm, right before I'm about to do my working set, I just walk over and grab the tripod and turn it and hit the button. So I, I don't really think that it takes a lot of time, but I'll say this, if, if, you, care, if you care about making, you know, I'm, I'm not saying if you don't record your sets, you won't make progress, but it definitely will help expedite that process a lot more because you'll be, uh, you'll be able to watch all your sets from every week. And, uh, yeah. Thoughts on Brian Shaw, uh, another beast, another beast, absolute beast in the gym, beast in the beast in the kitchen, beast in business. So, legend. Brian Shaw is a legend. How about fucking eat more, yes sir? Put it down. Thoughts on zinc supplementation. Um, I don't think it, if you're talking about using it for like testosterone, it's not going to do anything that you'll notice. It's a good antioxidant. If you get sick a lot, maybe I would take some zinc, but it's not going to change your life. What tripod do you use? I literally went on Amazon and I searched iPhone tripod and I just bought one. I, I have no, I have no idea which one it is, dude. It was like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. Which bodybuilder's physique inspires you or is your favorite? This may be an unpopular question, but when when I choose like the bodybuilders that I like, it really very rarely has nothing to do with like what their physique looks like. It, it to me is like how they went about achieving it. Um, you know, you, you brought up Jay Cutler. A reason why Jay Cutler inspires me so much is because when you watch his videos like outside of the gym, like he was a robot. He, he did, he dedicated and sacrificed his life to being the best bodybuilder that he could be. And that, that to me is the thing that inspires me. Like when I, when I look at some of the bodybuilders, like Flex Wheeler and like those guys, like the guys who were like gifted and had like amazing physiques, but they were like going out and partying and stuff, you know, like that isn't really a guy that I can really draw inspiration from. Cause I knew, I know that if I do that, like, I'm just, you know, I won't get anywhere. So, um, I, that, you know, that's, that's probably not a good answer, but, um, I, I don't typically like see bodybuilders physiques and like, am inspired by the actual physique itself. It's more about how they went about achieving it. Um, if I had to say like, who's a physique that I really like, I like Hunter Labrada. I like his physique. His physique is, is cool. Um, who else, who else's physique do I like? I mean, I like Jay's, I like James, James Hollingshead. 
I'm like scrolling through my Instagram feed right now, trying to see like pictures of people to kind of spring into my mind. But it's 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 more so about you know how how they train and how they live their life that I draw inspiration from more so than the actual physique itself. How much can magnesium help with sleep? Um, I find that magnesium glycinate helps me quite a bit. Other types of magnesium, not so much. So magnesium glycinate is, uh, is my personal favorite. It's all down to perception. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, I don't know. I think of, I kind of think of like bodybuilders, like I think of like, like an MMA fighter or something like just this one, this one person athlete who's like pursuing this, this goal. So for, for me, it's just more about like how they go about living that lifestyle that I like. So. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this one up tonight. Thanks for, thanks for taking time out of your Saturday to, to come uh, and hang out with me. Um, I will definitely be doing another one of these sometime soon coming up within the week. Uh, I'll make sure that I post. Uh, this one was kind of like a spur of the cuff one. I just kind of started it randomly. But I'll make sure that I get one out this week where I schedule it so we can kind of get a good turnout for it. So thanks again for, uh, for tuning in. And thanks again for the questions, guys. Looking forward to what you guys have for me next time. Hope you guys take care. Have a good rest of your weekend.